Hello, welcome back. In the last video, I was just tuning the deadbolt a little bit, trying to figure out how to make it work best and determine that the nose wasn't falling over on that uh, climbing right-hand turn because the tail is too heavy, in my estimation. So, um, what it needs to be able to do is just push. It doesn't need to um, do anything but keep the tail down during descent. So, what I've done is I took the brass ring out of my Enjora wheels and these are actually the um, I drop it these are the wheels that come with the Hyrax they're um, beadlock rims and they're really easy to take apart you just take those three screws off and I've done this on another video but people don't seem to quite yet understand how really simple these are to take apart so I'll do it right here in this video for you and I'll show you what I took from the from the Hyrax rims in order to make the rear lighter on the car. Well, there's enough slop in these that the ends come out. That's the back bead lock, and this is the front bead lock. So, and this is the rim part, and this is the equivalent. They're about the same size, close enough that it makes no difference. And uh, what I did was, because that, uh, the wheels, I believe, on the back of the deadbolt were too heavy, it wasn't letting it do what I wanted it to. So I took out a 12.9 gram ring in favor of one, for one that's basically air. And um, started off with a 30.8 gram wheel. Looks the same, but this one here in the right hand has plastic in a ring and it's almost half the weight 18.9 so um, that's what I wanted I wanted that nose to outweigh the front because you get a little bit better performance out of it and if you want to put these back onto other tires it's not a problem to do that you just uh, take the ring pop it in any set of tires you like if you want to have a lighter set of wheels and um, just put the bead locks back on. It just, again, takes seconds. But I'm gonna uh, swap both of these out so they're both uh, 18 gram wheels in the back and I think that will then give me the nose rotation that I was looking for in order to make that climbing right hand turn and we'll go try it. Let's find out, oh, stand by. Alright, after taking the brass rings out, let's reweigh the truck. And it's coming in at 308 grams, down from almost 340. So uh, that's that's a pretty good weight loss. And I think the weight balance and uh, center of gravity is more important than the overall weight of the vehicle. So we'll take it over to the rock course and find out what happens. Let's see if we can't get this worked around this time. So by reducing the weight of the rear axle, I was able to make that climb that has not yet. And uh, it just needed that extra center of gravity. I have lost some downhill capability, but um, I think it was worth it because now the front tires are the dominant force in what this truck does rather than the back. Another benefit is when you're going over terrain, uh, since the majority of the weight is in the front of the vehicle, um, all you really have to worry about is whether the front of the truck tips over. If the back starts tipping, that's not that's bad if the back of the truck can make a tip. Suppose you drop a rear tire into a hole, you don't want it to be heavy enough that it pulls the truck, you know, upside down because it drops one rear tire. I like the back to be light. And my theory on crawling is that it all happens at the front tires. Um, the back tires are just to hold the car in place. That's all it does. It just holds the front tires steady. And um, all you need is, if I only could have one wheel in the back, that might be even fine too. But um, you got to have two for balance, I guess. So 
but the back to me isn't really a part that I think much about. I just want it to track behind the front tires and make sure that the front tires do what they need to do. If I was to drop a rear tire in a hole, I don't want it to, to pull the car over. I'll try to run on the other side I wasn't able to do last time. If you remember before, I could not get the truck to go over this rock right here. It just kept getting hung up and then stuck back in there. So we'll see if that happens on this run. front tire sliding going on and this is a, a fault of the um, uh, I'm gonna blame the servo on this one because if I turn the wheel to the left and it doesn't turn left and it activates the steering the uh, servo saver that's not okay because now it's doing things that I didn't tell it to do and uh, that will like right now I have to back it up and actually move the truck and see how I'm carrying see how I'm carrying the right rear tire in the air here if this thing weighed more it would just pull it upside down that's why I don't like to have the back real heavy I want the front to dominate what the truck does I just want the back end to follow and uh, do what the front tells it otherwise you got to drive the front and back half of the car and that's fine for a four-wheel steer rig, but this is only two. And I'm running into an issue here where my steering servo does not have enough torque to get it to do what I need it to do. When I when I put when I throw the wheel to one side or the other, I need that wheel to move. And with this big of a tire plus the uh, weight behind it I, here I'll show you I'll try to get it to do it again without flipping getting some of my crawler philosophy I guess Let's let that fall over and right now I'm in the, ser the steering the servo saver it should be cutting that wheel hard right and it just barely takes it I need it to cut hard right to make this climb. And let me get a view in there and see if I can show you. You see how that servo's turning, but it's this is the combination of the drag link and the uh, the servo saver. It just doesn't want to make the wheels turn when I'm telling them to turn. And that's a huge limitation on the front end of a vehicle like this. So without doing anything else, um, actually I am going to do one other run just to show you the next limitation and I think we're going to correct both of those in a moment. This right ahead of my truck is another problem area for this rig and what you're seeing is the bumper from deadbolt getting into the rock and what I need to have happen is that front tire hit the rock first on the right side and not the bumper because if you hit the bumper and the tires not touching you're stuck it's not going anywhere I've got most of my other rigs I've already done this run and even small tire rigs if you can put the tire against the rock it'll climb it but because that's hitting first on the right hand side the bumper it can't climb it's just stuck so um, now it's hardened for the rock both sides and it's never gonna go over that well these tires really want to do it and I've got about five millimeters before I can make that happen so uh, I'm gonna get rid of the stock servo and I'm also gonna get rid of the bumper and I'm going to reposition my lights using a MoFo RC um, headlight mount.
they're about eight bucks and I love them. I've got them on several of my rigs and I need to actually order a few more. This tiny piece here holds the uh, LEDs for the headlight and mounts right on, uh, on top of the servo. And I've got these on several of my trucks. I can't speak today, sorry about that. Um, I've got them on several of my trucks and they're fantastic. This is one of my favorite parts that he makes. And he makes a lot of good stuff, but I really like these. They're a simple thing. And uh, when I first saw it as part of a kit, I was like, hey, Nick, you really need to offer this separate because it's really cool. I like it. And uh, I'm going to keep buying them because until I run out of rigs, I'm going to keep buying these things. All right, I've pulled the uh, bumper off right here. I'm going to take the wires out of it and uh, just a couple of little hooks back there that hold it in and I've also taken the servo out and I'm gonna see if I can't kinda rig up the uh, mofo RC server or servo into the stock one and make it work um, if I can't I'm gonna go ahead and throw in this reefs 99 sized one and I'll probably have to move some stuff around one more thing I'm gonna do while this is torn apart is I'm gonna cut these frame rails probably about here and here and just get rid of the front part because I don't need it it is forward weight but it gets in the way and um, maybe I'll cut them out here a little bit that way it'll still be clear of the uh, cords and everything for the light kit but I don't need this sticking out forward and restricting the movement of the truck all right, I just cut the front off the frame rail and uh, it didn't need to be there. So I rounded the edges of it and, uh, you know, my rule, save all the pieces. At some point in the future, I'll pull that out of a parts bin and it will be useful for something else. Just a side note, anytime you use a Dremel cutoff wheel, don't breathe the dust. I'm sure it's not good for you. Uh, I did that outside in the wind and I held my breath so I wasn't going to breathe any of it. Um, here is the size difference between a few servos just in case you're curious. That's the ASF-1 servo. This is the Emax, and uh, if I can get around my camera here, I'll show you the step up in size. Sorry about the... These are the common servos that you're going to see um, throughout crawling in 124 scale, and this is the AS-1 um, stock one. It still has the servo saver on it. Moving over, the Emax is a little bit larger, and uh, it's a little deeper too. And it just looks bigger because it has a servo saver on it. But the Emax is larger. Then you move over to the Mofo RC, and then the A20 CLS is the biggest, most powerful, and it's the same basic thing as the Reefs 99. It's made on the same uh, manufacturing line. It's just packaged different, and it's less expensive. So. Um, these are the most common ones. Um, I haven't tried the Mofo, so I'm going to throw that in. I have tried the Emax. It's a $4 servo, and it's what I have in most of my rigs right now. I do have one that has a uh, Savox uh, 2056 servo, and it's got twice the torque of the AS1. And Honestly, it was so big that it was hard to install. But I think I can install the Mofo RC um, servo onto a stock servo mount and in order to do that you do have to use a screws that are a bit longer pretty much the longest uh, screw that they put in an ESC kit or I'm sorry a SCX24 kit and I'll show you that next to the one that it came with so you can see the size difference there but I think it'll bolt in and I'm just gonna bolt my uh, light kit in I went ahead and just shoved the LEDs into the holes. That's ready to install. And I already know I like this kit, so I won't talk about that anymore. That is how the light kit sits on top of the servo. And it has holes in the same places that it mounts. Um, you just put the screw through it. Normally you'd put that on the front side of the servo bracket, but since I've got space behind it, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the back side today. This is the wire that goes to my MoFo RC server. 
And I'm about to void a warranty. It's too long. This probably would have been easier to not have it in the truck while trying to solder this thing together. But since I removed a bunch of wire, I mean, it's got way too much wire in there. This is enough to go to the back of the truck. I mean, it's, it's a lot of wire. And I don't want that all bunching up, so I went ahead and cut it. I have a soldering iron that I bought at, I think, Menards. It was like 15 bucks, And uh, you don't need anything special. Uh, when you solder, though, you do want to keep a few things in mind. Um, organize your wires so they go back the same. Do something with flux, because if you don't flux your wires, the, the solder is just not going to hold. And I like to use acid flux. That's what's in this jar here. It looks like fingernail polish. But do not put it on your skin. It's sulfuric acid, I believe, or hydrochloric acid. Some kind of acid, I don't know. I don't care. But uh, I prepare each of these ends. I get in nice and acidy. That's a word I just made up. And now the solder will stick to them. And what I do first after that is find the solder. Stand by. All right, I found my solder, and what I'm gonna do now is pin the wires, and since they have acid on them, you can use paste as well, but I started using acid flux when I raced slot cars, and I really liked it, and if I solder these with acid flux, it, they don't come apart. So um, all I'm doing right now is just tinning the wires and what that means is I'm just getting some solder on them. And that way it's kind of pre-saturated with uh, the solder. Which is just metal that you're melting in. And it just takes one touch and that flux will draw it right in. The... Uh, least contact you have the better when soldering because you don't want to transfer a lot of heat into your work sometimes they're sensitive electronics that don't like that I started using this clear heat shrink tubing a while back and I really like it because I can see if wires come apart without tearing it apart I can just look at it and it also makes a really nice um, visual uh, thing when you're done it looks good and what heat shrink tubing does is it insulates the wires I had to strip the ends to get um, wires exposed and um, when you're done you don't want to expose wires because that'll short out and can damage electronics so darn it, that just slipped off. anyway since the, I'll just worry about the next one. I'll do the middle wire first. Not that it matters. Solid. I'll put the heat shrink tubing back on the yellow one. It slipped off. Sort of hold those wires together, and since they're pre soldered, all I have to do is not burn myself, tap them together, and get them to stick. Not pretty. Uh, I prefer to have my solders look a little better than that rather than have a peak. So I'll redo it. Just got to line them up. Now when 
you do this, make sure you don't hit your hands on it because that soldering iron is hot enough to melt solder, which often is made of lead or silver and tin. So if you touch that to your skin, it's going to cauterize it instantaneously or just burn through. Better hope it cauterizes, I guess. Because then you don't bleed and it recovers much easier. You will burn yourself once in a while, though. You won't die. Hold that together. And I'm just going to put a little more solder on the end of my iron. See, this is beginner lesson for everything. When you're done here, you're going to be able to work on any RC there is. At least you'll have a foundation for it. Alright, I mentioned the heat shrink tubing before. And what you do is you slide that over the bare parts of your wire. I'm going to push all these kind of in the same area. So they're um, ready to be heat shrinked. My dad bought me this torch when I helped him close the lake house. It was $10 at Napa and it's fantastic. It's really easy for heat shrink because I just click it on, put a little heat on it, and they shrink just like the name. Let me get both sides of it. burn my uh, self here and in the end here I'm going to push them all together while it's still hot and now I have insulated wires none of them are touching each other and the heat shrinks as they uh, cooled stuck together so it still looks like you know I don't have wires flipping everywhere now when I hook the light kit back up you'll see on the ESC it says LED you'll want to put the red wire up it's got a black and a red going into the plug the red wire up and you put it on the bottom two plugs there's three in there and it's the bottom two you can put it in either ESC uh, slot it doesn't matter and I'm going to reconnect the steering the yellow one goes up gray and or, uh, brown actually on the bottom all right and uh, one of the last things, oh, I kind of messed up here. I'll have to get my steering linkage out of there and um, hook it up because right now there's no connection between the front wheels and that uh, drag link that goes from wheel, uh, the wheel to wheel up to the servo. So I'll work on that next. My table is becoming a little cluttered, but I'm working on it. I'll clean it later. Uh, when you go to install a servo arm on a servo that has previously been removed, or you're installing a new servo, start by turning your controller and car on and then centering your steering. This is your steering trim for right and left. That's how you set where center is. Then you come down to your truck, make sure the servo turns. It does. I have a good connection there. Now, with that uh, centered on the controller, it's indexed. Line your wheels up. Then we will take the servo horn and push it on in the closest to center place it will allow. There's teeth or splines on this output shaft and they correspond to grooves inside of your servo arm and it's important to get them as close as possible that way your steering trim can pick up the slack for whatever else it needs to later and do not lose your servo horns they're important because uh, the Mofo RC one here is a different size than just about everything else and I was testing it in the process of testing I popped it off I also noticed that 
uh, I don't necessarily want that um, screwed in as far as I have it because the output shaft sticks out farther than stock and uh, I said earlier I'll be replacing these plastic garbage uh, I'm just backing the screw out of the horn a little bit but I will be replacing these steering links with with mofo RC brass ones It'll give me a little more weight up front which I want and um, that'll be good so center of the wheels as much as possible push it on I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of Loctite blue if I can get it to come out here on the servo horn screw that will keep it from backing out. I just uh, put a tiny amount on that. That's all it needs. Install that. Okay. We have a serviceable. Oh crap! That really just broke. Oh, that's a problem. It had enough power, it literally broke the the screw. So it's a minor problem, but uh, I got to get that out or go with a different screw hole. And uh, that thing's got some torque. That's not going to be an issue with this. Well, it's a hateful universe. Um, you can see how long that should be, and you can see that. The one on the right there had the end break off. Unfortunately, it broke off in my servo horn. And it's proving to be very difficult to get out. And I don't know that I can, but it's okay. I'll just step one uh, pull out and uh, screw it into that one. And hopefully this one won't break too. Um, I'm going to set the servo throw a little bit less so that it doesn't break hopefully and uh, see what it does this time I've screwed in far enough that if it breaks off again I can grab that part with pliers on the other end and just take it out that way my son is being loud upstairs but see that knob that says DR on the uh, right side there uh, if you turn that all the way up it gives you full steering throw and in this case I had to back it off because full steering throw was pushing the uh, steering links too far and that's actually what caused that first one to break and it's not a problem you just want it to push as far as it needs to go and no more if you go more then you're just going to start burning up your servos quicker so set the dual rate as low as you can but still make it do what you need it to do that will give you the longest servo life all right, new servos installed, bumpers gone. I have my light mount on, and uh, I did trim the front of the body just a little bit, and that allows the lights to shine forward, and I'll show you the light pattern on the ground in a second, but uh, it'll steer, and it does everything it needs to do now. We are back at the spot that the bumper stopped the vehicle before, and uh, see what happens this time this time I have enough approach angle that I can get a wheel into that rock it doesn't have to be much just one side at a time just enough to get it lifted and we're up so that bumper on the deadbolt does uh, greatly reduce your approach angle so I recommend taking it off and if you still want to have lights I recommend the uh, Mopo RC light mount it works fantastic and uh, we've got the clearance we need now I think I've got it stuck in a place where it shouldn't be but easy enough to fix now that I have the approach angle remember when we did the high clearance links yesterday in the last video, I should say, that's where these really help. 
going over peaks like that, it makes it a lot easier because it keeps the tires on the ground a lot longer uh, going over terrain because I'm not having to clear um, the links. The links are already up out of the way. angle on that Oops. rear tire in a hole up and over one thing I do like about this truck is how nice the gear mesh is it's very very quiet this is one of my quietest uh, rigs that I've ever built I think all right, I'm going to try the same run that we couldn't do before for one reason or another. First, it was steering and torque and all sorts of things. Another thing I like here is if you have a light rear axle um, and you're hanging one of the front wheels, like right here, that front wheel is going to want to settle back, and the back won't overpower it by dropping in a hole and... Uh, sticking it but this thing drives right over had no steering authority issues it just takes it let that slide down settle on the rock and when you have a light tail end on the car it doesn't matter which direction it goes because it can't flip the car over if you're uh, front end is the dominant factor on weight and balance the back is just along for the ride it, it won't tip you it'll just articulate do what it needs to do and uh, this thing is nothing like it was yesterday when I got it out of the box still a little bit high center gravity and this is a a spot here that's designed to uh, flip you over. I do that on purpose. It's a steep rounded rock and uh, small tire trucks do it easier. I'm sure if I ran this a few times I'd get it done. But I've got some more plans for it. I think we have a truck that is fantastic and uh, something that is ready for the next thing we do to it. But if I did nothing else to it, this is now a really good crawler. The only thing I would do different, I think, is just cut a little of this away to uh, just extend this back and clearance it for when the wheel turns all the way and it's compressed. I noticed it was getting the tire into the body a little bit, and that's undesirable, but it's not a problem. I might just take a about a three millimeter arc away from it and that'll be enough um, but now that this is a good truck it'll drive anywhere I think that I try to take it um, next we're going to start doing some of the cool stuff that I meant to do for a while um, just a preview of what's coming RoboFlex uh, cantilever shocks see you in the next video